Welcome to my kitchen. Today I want to show you how I make my shepherd's pie. It's the ultimate of comfort food. It takes a few ingredients, but you can add livet with what you've got. But here's how I do it. I have some ground chuck. I personally like chuck, it has a lot of flavor. I like the 80-20 blend because I like a little more fat in it. Having said that, that is going to the pot. And I'm going to break this up a little bit. We're going to start browning that. While that's browning, we're going to add a chopped onion. And the way you do that is take your ends off. We're going to cut the onion in half. Take off the top layer, and this you want to put aside for your stock pot vegetables. And if you're not going to make any chicken stock, beef, well, beef stock, how many people make beef stock? But chicken stock anyway, that probably be the more, most likely. Put it in the freezer so it'll keep. Then we're going to do a quick chop on these onions while I am keeping an eye on this beef that is starting to brown on the bottom. And we want to break this up so that it's not chunky, not like little mini meatballs in there. And to do that, just keep cutting into it as it cooks. We're going to, of course, chop the onion both halves because this will cook into this will shrink considerably what I've done already is pre peel some cloves of garlic now you could mince them but I like that what I like better especially for this type of a dish is to whoops, take that end off the root end and I like putting it through my garlic press. If you don't happen to have a garlic press, I would suggest getting one because they're just so handy. This is a xylus, I guess as you say it, made in Switzerland. It works great. It feels good in your hand so you can grab it without it being real chunky and you can press it real easy. You put the clove of garlic in the bottom, push it down, and Presto, you have really fast minced garlic, more like a puree actually, which is the best flavor because the smaller you cut a clove of garlic, the more flavor you're going to get out of it. Okay, I'm going to take the inside out with this little tool that cleans the press. You just push those little spike-like deals in there. And then, whatever's in there, inside, that didn't go through the press, is now easy to get out. And then, you can give this a quick cut, so that you're actually losing nothing. You can hear the sizzling a little more. We're still chopping her up. And... To this pie, I can start putting in some of the seasoning because this is browning at a nice pace. I can put the onion in now. We'll do that. And then while the onion's cooking, I'm going to add some bay leaf. Now, bay leaf. Make sure that we're going to put two bay leaves in there two or three depending on what size. If they were that size, I'd be adding a few more. But count how many bay leaves you're putting in because that's what you're gonna wanna take out in the end because the shepherd's pie is something that you don't really want to bite into a bay leaf. Anyway, so there's the bay leaf. Put a little bit of Worcestershire sauce in there. Just a little bit, probably a good tablespoon or so. I'm going to put a little bit of oregano because oregano goes well with chilies. And this is going to be a chili based shepherd pie. Then we're going to put 
a little bit of rosemary that is crumbled so you're not biting into pine needles, which people hate. And then I'm going to put a little sprinkle of thyme. Fresh would be nice, but it's too cold here to go have any fresh. I'm also going to put in here a little bit of smoked paprika. I love this stuff, but in small doses. It's a Spanish smoked paprika, and you should be able to get it at any grocer that sells specialty foods or online La Tienda has it and they have really the best of Spanish anything then we're gonna put in a little bit not much of regular paprika just a little bit for flavor and a tiny bit of chili powder not hot chili powder you could put in a little bit of crushed red pepper if you want a little heat in this I personally don't care about heat, that's just my thing. But if you want a little heat, you could put in a hotter red pepper or a hotter little bit of chili powder or crushed red pepper. And then, it needs beef base. So you can go two ways with beef base. You can buy the containers and haul water and base, which is beef broth, or buy the containers of beef base to which you add water. I don't necessarily refrigerate mine ever and they last just fine. It's a lot of salt in these but there is a really good beef flavor when chances are not many people are making their own beef stock. I mean I used to and if you want to know how to do it just leave me a note and I'll tell you how to do it but as I find myself getting away from beef I don't have the bones, nor the um, time, or what am I going to do with it. I guess beef and vegetable soup, but like I say, I'm just not using it that much. Now what you want to do is mix all this together, and you can see that the beef is getting cut down to size, you know, to much smaller piece, and the purpose of putting everything in a little bit early was to get the flavors to bloom a little bit in this. So we're going to let this cook and I'm going to keep cutting this down with a spoon, much like making the base of a bolognese sauce, sort of, with the different seasonings. I take that back. Let it cook for a little while then I'll show you how easy it is to thicken that. All right, now that the meat's browned nicely, with the onion, the bay, all the seasonings, and the onion is nice and soft, what I want to do now is stir in a little bit of tomato paste, probably a good two or three tablespoons, or maybe half of one of the real small cans, and then We'll get that nicely mashed in there. Ooh, the seasoning, it smells so good. So good. Then what we're going to do is make the gravy. Now that that's stirred in really well, what I'm gonna do is show you an easy way to make the gravy because we do want this to have a little bit of a binding kind of a sauce with it. So we have the beef base already mixed in there. Now I'm going to sprinkle the top of this with a couple, maybe two, three, maybe even up to four tablespoons of flour. It's about a tablespoon to the cup and I do have a quart of water. And we're going to mix this flour. This is the way you can make soups too. Saute all your vegetables and like if you're making mushroom soup, whatever, saute all your vegetables, sprinkle them with flour after they're thoroughly cooked, and however much you're making, that'll be a different lesson. Equal portions, butter and flour, and then add your liquid, and you won't have any lumps, and it'll thicken really well. So anyway, now I have the flour mixed, 
I have no white showing whatsoever, no lumps of flour. Now what I'm going to do is add the liquid just a little bit at a time. And that will slowly warm up, which it did. I'll add a little bit more. And then this will thicken. So the fat from the meat is acting as part of the roux. You now you make a roux with equal parts fat and, and flour. Well, that's what we're doing here. So you can see what's going on here. By adding the flour and using the fat from the meat, I have created the roux to then thicken this sauce up. And you know what? This smells really good. I'll quickly season this with a little pepper. And chances are it's going to take a little bit of salt. So I'll just put a little sprinkle in there and stir that in so that it has a chance to melt before I taste it. A lot of mistakes that people make with over salt and is not letting, if they're using a coarse salt, not letting it thoroughly melt. And then it's like, oh dear, then when it does melt into whatever you're cooking it in, ooh, stuff can get really salty. I myself am guilty of that a few times. And I'm gonna let it cool really well before I put the shepherd's pie together. What I'm gonna do is butter the bottom of the container, or use some kind of nonstick, put this in the bottom, and then mashed potatoes on top. So, this little bit of, shall we say, gravy looseness of the meat will then absorb up into the mashed potatoes. Though I am gonna put a nice thick layer of mashed potatoes. Anyway, it makes for a better flavor. So, that's one step done, and that's the basics of a shepherd's pie. Then we'll come back after I get some potatoes cooked, which you can't, they have to be put on warm. So after I get the potatoes cooked, we'll be back, revisit this and finish it. And now to finish the shepherd's pie. Yesterday, we made meat mixture. The ground beef, the garlic, the onion, and all those spices. And then I thickened it with a little bit of flour pour the water in because I used a beef base, so that made beef stock. And then before I put it in the container, I also pulled the two bay leaves out. But what happened was I wanted to purposely get this cold because it just works better. Um, I might not have put quite enough flour in because there's still a little bit of fat that floated to the top. So I want to get rid of that. I don't want to use that. And that is just gonna go to the trash. I'm using these oven to table containers and one for myself. These are great. Techno bake. It's Russian poplar. They are completely reusable. They take heat to 390 degrees. The French use them, it's a traditional baking mold and they're just really, really great containers. There's all sorts of sizes and shapes and what have you. They come with liners and they make a great reusable baking container, especially, you know what these come in really handy for? You know, making a little bit extra. If you have a friend that's sick or that doesn't feel like cooking, or, you know, if my mom were still around, I used to make her little freezer meals because she'd go to the store and buy you know, whatever it was, like Stouffer's, well, we'll upgrade that a little bit. But these make absolutely beautiful gifts. They also sell lids separate, but okay, so let's move on to how to do this. Now, because I want some kind of consistency, I do want to weigh these. I did make some mashed potatoes. These are still warm. Cold, you have to do the mashed potatoes when they're warm. All I did was, and I have a video on that, mash the potatoes up with butter, tiny bit of the really good milk, the Hartzler milk, and heavy cream. Can't forget the heavy cream. 
So while those are still warm, and I left them in the pan for that purpose because they're still warm, um, we're going to put the ground beef in the container. So I'm using one of the reusables because this will be leaving the house tomorrow. And I'm making one for myself. So what you can see is by this one for myself, I'm putting the ground beef mixture in the bottom and I want to flatten it out as best as possible. I press it down in there and that fills all the holes and gaps nicely. And then what you do is put the mashed potatoes on top and voila, you have a shepherd's pie. Then it goes to the oven just to warm it. So all it needs is to warm it. I like to put it in the oven, you know, maybe at a higher heat the last five minutes or so if the potatoes haven't started to brown. And another tip is you don't want to put too much uh, milk and cream in, just enough to mash them so that this won't run out all over. You don't want them really loose. So having said that, I'm going to put a little bit here. Looks like I'll have a little bit left over, which I love having mashed potatoes left over because they rewarm beautifully. And I could, but I'm not going to on this particular batch. You could add cheese to the top, like a little uh, grated cheddar, cheddar that you've grated. I like pepper, so these are getting a little bit extra pepper on top. You know what else I like to do just because I like to send them out looking kind of pretty? I'm going to put a couple chopped onions on the top. And I am also going to do that for myself. A couple of chopped green onion. In the summer, if my chives were up, I, I could use some chives too. That's always good. So anyway, there you have a couple different containers of shepherd's pie. It's really easy. Hope you try it. It's a good use for ground beef. Oh, also another good use for this beef mixture because I have all the chilies in it. Put it over some corn chips and then put some cheese over it and whatever else you want. When it comes out, sour cream I love on it. Dress them up, they make great nachos. And they microwave, makes a great snack, it's easy. I hope you try that because it's quite tasty, easy to make, and it's very economical. Feel free to subscribe to my channel so you can have new videos that will pop up at least once a week. And hit the little bell and you'll get notifications of when that happens. I have a cookbook out and there's a lot of really wonderful restaurant recipes in that. And these two will go to the next cookbook. Enjoy and thanks for watching.